Good morning. Who is weeping on the mountains? We're at Jeremiah chapter 3, verses 19 through the first part of 22. But I said, How can I put you among the children and give you a pleasant land, a beautiful heritage of the hosts of nations? And I said, You shall call me my father, and not turn away from me. Surely as a wife treacherously departs from her husband, so have you dealt treacherously with me, O house of Israel, says the Lord. A voice was heard on the desolate heights, weeping and supplications of the children of Israel. For they have perverted their way, they have forgotten the Lord their God. Return, you backsliding children, and I will heal your backsliding. So here's crying on the mountaintops, the desolate heights. You might have thought this was going to be Jeremiah, but no, we'll, that's about 10 more chapters on. Although I think Jeremiah has probably done some crying already from the mountaintops. This is the children of Israel. This is, this is God's people, and they're crying on the mountaintops. Why? They are pleading with God. They're in terrible distress. Verse 21 tells us again why. It says that they have perverted their way, they have forgotten the Lord their God, that they have an awareness that they've departed from Him, and, and under duress now, they're, the picture here is of them coming back and, and pleading with God, sending up prayers. See, they've forgotten Him, but not completely. They've disregarded Him, but they're calling to Him now in their time of need. Isn't that so often the case it is for, for us when we God gets ignored, but when we suddenly have a case of giant emergency, you know, we're right on the red phone to him. But he's glad to have us back talking to him anyway. So God's response here is actually quite gracious. Verse 22, return you backsliding children and I will heal your backslidings. And the matter is, uh, is addressed even more literally in the New American Standard Bible in verse 22. Uh, we have... Uh, I, like, I like the way it's put there. Return, O faithless sons, I will heal your faithlessness. So God is very gracious to give them these offers. Not just to pardon, but to heal. Now elsewhere in the book, in several places, Jeremiah returns again and again to this theme of, of healing. God wants to heal his people. Jeremiah 30 talks about their incurable wounds, and yet God goes on and says he will cure them but mostly we're going to save those for, for further on. Very often we act stupidly and, and uh, we come to a place where we just, in urgency, we come back to God. We begin to seek God again, recognizing our need. Go ahead and hear these early chapters, aware that these people are very compromised and God is working to bring them back to himself by letting them experience some of the effects of their own going, goings away from him. God is laboring to bring true healing to a very stubborn people, maybe as stubborn as you and I are. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you that, that there you are, waiting for us, uh, pleading with us, working for our hearts. Um, we look back at the children of Israel and we see them uh, being, being ridiculous, and yet there you still are, Lord, waiting for them to return. Help us, Lord, not to be quite so stubborn. Help us to come back to you right away from any departures we've made from you so that you can work the, the, the loving healing that you have planned for us. Uh, please, Lord, help us to, to come, come readily to you and receive from you. Thank you for your, your mercies. Lord, in Jesus' name we pray to you. Amen. Weeping on the mountaintops. How much weeping have you and I done? over our sins. Something, something maybe to think on. A lot of us don't have deep emotions with God, and that could be an indication that our walk with Him is not as deep as it ought to be. Something to think on today. Walk with Him as you go through this day, and God be with you.